All right, this is page 13 of Math Analysis. Uh, it's notes two, and we are doing some ray triangle trig, and what we're gonna do is try to read these problems and turn them into trig problems and solve them. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, so we got OSHA standard 1926.1053B5 section one states. So OSHA is like the office of, I don't know, safety and health administration or something like that. Um, let me see. Let me let me look that up. Give me one second here. Let's see what OSHA stands for. OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. All right. So they like come up with rules for things that you can and can't do um, in the workplace, pretty much. So non-self-supporting ladders. So a self-supporting ladder is the kind of ladder that makes like a, a triangle. You know, like you you carry it and then you open it up and then you can walk up. It's self-supporting. Non-self-supporting ladders are the ones you have to lean against something. So this says, non-self-supporting ladders shall be used at an angle such that the horizontal distance from the top, horizontal distance from the top support to the foot of the ladder. So the horizontal distance from the top support to the foot of the ladder. Let's start drawing. So uh, let's have like a wall that I guess this will uh, lean against. And let's have uh, the horizontal. And then uh, let's have our ladder. So there we go. All right. So looks like we got a right triangle here, at least kind of. Um, okay. So horizontal distance from the top support to the foot of the ladder. So that would be uh, this. So I'm going to call it X. Right? Because the top support is uh, directly above, like, where the right, this point right here, here. Uh, the horizontal distance from the top support to the foot of the ladder is approximately one quarter the working length of the ladder. Okay, so if this is X, so this I made X. Now this is supposed to be one fourth the working length of the ladder. The working length of the ladder is the ladder. So if this is X, then this part here, the, the ladder itself, would have to be 4x. So let's see if that makes sense. So if the ladder was 20 feet long, then at most x could be one fourth of that. So five. So I think it works. Um, the distance along the ladder between the foot and the top. Okay, so it's explaining the working length. Assume the ladder is against a vertical wall, find the angle of elevation of the ladder from the horizontal. So we are looking for uh this we're looking for that angle so uh what do we have we have that uh we have the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse so adjacent hypotenuse feels like cosine so i'm going to say that the cosine of theta is equal to uh adjacent which is x over hypotenuse which is 4x so cosine of theta is one fourth all right so if, uh, if that's the case, then theta should be the inverse cosine of one fourth, which is great, except I feel like when you're working, uh, you probably aren't thinking of the inverse cosine of one fourth, like you're about to climb a ladder. So let's get a decimal on that. And um, let's, see, let's see how steep this can be. Um, so I'm gonna share the calculator. See how this goes. Sometimes this, uh, sometimes this doesn't go well. Uh, all right, so I'm in degrees. I want to be in degrees. I think it feels like the most sensible thing for when you're trying to like estimate. So I'm going to do the inverse cosine. So one thing that I can do is I can type arc cosine. There's a reason it's called that, but arc cosine is another way of saying inverse cosine. And actually that is such a common thing to do that watch what happens when I press, uh, I'm going to press control enter. It changes it into inverse cosine. So here we're getting approximately 75 point five to three degrees. So it can be pretty steep. I mean, uh, lean something against a wall and see how that works out for you. Like 75 degrees is pretty steep. Um, so I think that's good. I think that's the answer to this question. Now, maybe you don't read it and you immediately think like X, right? I read it and I was like, so there's some unknown distance. I'm just going to call that distance X and then have everything based on that. If you hadn't done that and you had said like, you know, let's say that that distance is 10 
Then when you get to the next part of the problem where it says that that's one fourth of the working length, now the working length becomes 40. Your ratio will be one to four. That's how trig works, all based on um, similar triangles, basically. So it shouldn't really matter what X is. And you can see the way that we built this um, because of the way we did it, it actually doesn't matter what X is. X is just gonna be the distance from the foot of the ladder to like the wall, basically. That's that horizontal distance. Doesn't make a difference what value you pick. So you could have picked values. All right, let's see this next problem. A five foot eight inch student who is standing 23 feet from the base of the school flagpole measures the angle of elevation from his eyes to the top of the pole to be 67.9 degrees. Okay, so we definitely need to draw a picture. Find the height of the pole to the nearest inch. It's kind of an issue in this problem, at least I think so. The issue for me is that for humans, your eyes aren't at the top of your head. So if we're going to the nearest inch, we're like losing inches there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume that this is not actually a human that's involved in this, but is instead some sort of alien, perhaps someone from Strango, who knows. Uh, I'm gonna give myself a horizontal and then give myself a flagpole. And then uh, I'm gonna draw the person or thing, right? So let's see, like this. And then let's say that he's kind of just a hammerhead, uh, but it's gotta be horizontal. So let's do this there. And he's got eyes. So something like this, right? And then he's got his arms. So he's a happy little guy, um, five foot, eight inches tall and then measures standing 23 feet, okay? So 23 feet here will be uh, this distance, let's say. Let's go straight from the eye. So we'll say that this is 23 feet. And then uh, measures the angle to the top of the pole. So you may have at some point in your life done this. Uh, you use a, a little device called a clinometer that you can make out of like a, uh, a protractor and a straw and like a piece of string with like something tied to it and you just kind of like tilt it and you can measure the angle. Uh, it's kind of a neat thing to do. Uh, all right, so this angle here that we have found, I've drawn, that's 23 feet, let's see. This angle is gonna be 67.9 degrees. 67.9 degrees. And we are looking for the height of the flagpole. Now the issue is, the student is already five foot eight inches, right? So this distance right here is five feet eight inches, which is what, 68 inches? So whatever we get for, for our calculation, because we're gonna be able to calculate, I think this distance, what color should we use? We're gonna calculate this distance. I'm gonna call this Y because it's vertical. Um, we'll calculate that and we just need to add 68 inches to it. So we're supposed to find the height to the nearest inch. All right, so what do we have that we can work with? We have opposite, adjacent, angle. So opposite, adjacent, angle, tangent. You actually find in application problems that tangent is super common uh, because it's unusual to know, other than when you have a ladder leaning against something, it's really weird to know like the line of sight distance from where you are to the top of something. Way more normal to know like how far you are horizontally um, and how tall the thing is, or you wanna know how tall the thing is. It's really weird to know like, like the hypotenuse, you get this sense with the Pythagorean theorem that it's like the most important part. Like, I don't know in the, in the application world if that's necessarily true. Uh, all right, so tangent, oh, we're writing in red. Too, too much, it's too aggressive. The tangent of 67.9 degrees is opposite over adjacent, which means this will be 23, just kind of cross multiply here, 67.9 degrees. Um, so we can get a decimal for that, and then the total, total height, we have to remember to add in. So it'll be 68 plus y which is approximately something. All right, so let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna to go to the calculator um, and just calculate these. 
So here I want to do 23 tangent of, not of that, 67.9. Make sure you're in degrees. Like always, first thing you do, like check that. So yeah, we get this. And then I want to add to that uh, 68. So 124.642, but it says to the nearest inch. So I'm going to say this was 57 inches. 57 inches, that doesn't make any sense. Oh my gosh, this is in feet. So this is feet. This is 56.6422 feet. Okay, so this, let me write that down. 56.6422 feet. I'm going to convert feet into inches. That did, yeah, because it like didn't really make sense to me. Like, like, why is the person 68 of those things tall and then the flagpole's only 56? Like, no, nah. no. Watch your units. So this is feet. So I'm going to multiply by 12 to get inches. 679.706 inches. 679.706 inches. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that. Add that to 68. And that'll give us our answer to the nearest inch. So 747.706. Seven, that like feels more reasonable. Um, 747.706. Seven, okay, 0 0.706, but we're supposed to go to the nearest inch, so let's say 748 inches. Okay, let me show you something you can do on here. So we could convert this to feet by just basically uh, dividing by 12, right? Um, and get like 62.3 feet, pretty tall. Uh, let's go back to this answer that we have, and I'm gonna press menu. I'm not, I'm gonna press catalog, catalog. Um, and then option three, is really cool. So option three, conversion assistant. So pick conversion assistant. And we wanna convert length from what? We wanna convert from inches into feet. And let's see what happens. So we're gonna let the calculator convert this number of inches into feet. And you can see that it does it for you. This is really cool. It's one of the features of the calculator. You should definitely learn to use it. You can, there's so many options, so many. So if we go back in, you know, you can look through them. So we got all these constants. Um, we have lengths. You know, this is like, this is a really good deal, uh, especially I think when you're in like chemistry, knowing how to use this is super useful. Um, but anyway, that's the conversion assistant. Highly, highly recommend that you learn how to use that. Let me go back to the notes. And then uh, I think that what I'll do is stop the video here so what happened in this video? Uh, one thing was I almost messed up, but then I thought about the reasonableness of my answer. And like, I, I was confusing inches and feet and it like didn't make any sense at all, the answer that I was getting. Cause 23, it turns out is in feet. I hadn't thought that through fully. Uh, but that's why you always want to think about your answers also. Like, don't just like go for it. You know, think about it. Is it reasonable? I think this is pretty reasonable because when we converted it back to feet, we got like 62 or something. Um, and that seems not impossible for a flagpole. Um, so let's, uh, let's call this a video here, come back in the next one, and we will solve some more. So I'll see you there.